Welcome back to the Simulator series. In today's episode, we are going to be creating the pet bank. As always, if you guys do enjoy the video or it does help you out, make sure you smash the like button, also to subscribe button, and turn this post notifications on so you get notified every time I upload a brand new Roblox development video. I also have a Patreon. If you guys like to support me and gain access to all the scripts and the game file that I make during this episode, there's a link down below in the description, and you guys can go check that out. With that being said, let's hop right into it. Hopping directly into the studio, the first thing that we're going to do is create the GUI. So inside of our starter GUI, we are going to add a brand new screen GUI to this, and then we're going to go all the way down to it, select that, and rename this to pet bank. Now that we've renamed that, we also want to adjust some of the properties. So for the reset on spawn, we actually want to set that to false. And then for the Z index behavior, we actually want to set that to global so that we can easily play around with the Z index of a couple of the children that we're going to make inside of here. Next, what we're going to do is actually add a frame directly inside of the GUI. And we're going to go ahead and adjust the position. For the anchor point, we're going to set both of those to 0.5 as well as both the scale for the position. So 0.5 comma 0 comma 0.5 comma 0. Now that it's censored on our screen, we want to adjust the sizing of it. For the sizing of this, on the X scale, we're going to set that to 0.32 and on the y scale we're going to set that to 0.5 next what we're going to do is adjust the background color of this and we're going to make it kind of like a dark grayish slash blue color so there we go now that we have the main frame created what we're then going to do is throw a text label inside of here and we're going to rename this to title now for the actual text of this what we want it to say is the bank exclamation mark for the text color we actually want that to be a white and we also want to set it to be scaled as well. For the font, we're of course going to go with our usual Gotham and we're going to actually make that bold. Then we want to set the background transparency to one because we don't want there to be any background. Then what we're going to do is start messing around with the sizing of this. For right now, I'm going to go with 0.3 on the X scale as well as 0 0.125 on the Y scale. Then we're of course going to go play with the positioning. On the anchor point for the X, we actually want to set that to 0.5. And for the position right now, we also want to set that to 0.5 on the X scale as well so that we have that centered horizontally. Now, you may also want to position this just a little bit further down so that it's not all the way at the top of the GY. You can drag it down a little bit with your mouse. So now we can see that the Y scale is 0 0.022. Since I like being pretty precise, I'm going to actually set this to 0 0.015. And that looks good to me. Now that we have that title label created, we're going to go ahead and duplicate this. And we're going to actually rename this to amount. Now, the text of this is actually going to say something like 99 slash 99 pet slots used. So basically this text label is going to be updated anytime a player deposits or withdraws a pet from or into their bank. In addition to changing the text, we also want to resize it a little bit and I'm only going to adjust the Y scale. So rather than it being 0.125, we're actually going to set it to 0 0.081. So that's just a little bit smaller than the title label. And then we also want to move this down a tiny bit as well. So we're going to adjust the position. Now for the position of this, we're actually going to set the Y scale to 0.134. So now it's just a little bit below our title label. And now we're going to create one more text label so we can go ahead and duplicate the amount text label and we're going to rename this to info now for the text of this we're actually going to say select an option below to continue and then we want to center this both horizontally and vertically so for the anchor point we're going to set that to 0.5 comma 0.5 and then for the position on both the scales we're going to set them to 0.5 as well in addition to that we also want to increase the size a little bit as well so for the x scale we're going to go with 0.4 and on the y scale we're going to go with 0.2 and now it's pretty large and easy to read now that we've done that we're going to go ahead and actually add a text button to this for this text button we're actually going to rename it to buy slots for the text of this we're going to say plus 25 slots and then for the background color of this we want to make it a lighter green so we're just going to go ahead with that. Now going back to the text, we of course want to make that scaled. And then for the text color, we actually want to make that white. Then we can go to the font. And of course, we're going to throw that as a Gotham. You can make this a bold if you want to, which I actually might go ahead and do that. Then we can go ahead and actually adjust the sizing of this. On the X scale, we're going to go with 0.18. And on the Y scale, we're going to go with 0 0.075. Then for the position of this, we want to position this to the right of the title text label. So for the X scale of the position, we're going to set that to 0 0.7. And on the Y scale, we're going to set that to 0 0.03. And now we can see it's still towards the top of the frame and it's just right beside the title towards the right. Next, what we're going to do is actually throw a UI corner inside of that button. Now that we've done that, we can actually go ahead and play around with the quarter radius. I'm going to set that to 0.3, and I think that looks pretty good. Additionally, inside of here, we can go ahead and throw a UI stroke. For the UI stroke, we can actually see that it's being applied to the text inside of the text button, and that's not what we want. What we actually want is for it to be the border of the text button, so that's why we're going to set the apply stroke mode of the UI stroke to border. And then additionally, we're going to increase the thickness a little bit, and I'm going to set that to 2. Now that we've done that, that button is looking all good. What we're then going to do is add the exit button to this as well. Now we have a ton of different GUIs that already have the exit button. So what I'm going to do is actually just grab that and paste that into here. So we're going to go inside of the reverse screen GUI inside of the frame. And then we see we have a text button right here called exit. So we're going to go ahead, copy that. And then to paste it directly into this frame, we're going to hit control shift and V and that's going to paste it right inside of here. Now that we've pasted inside of here, we can go ahead and start playing around with the sizing and the positioning for the position. We of course want this to be at the top right of our frame. So we're going to set the X scale to 0.93. And for the Y scale, we're going to set that to 0.03. And then we of course need to 
adjust the sizing of this as well. So for the sizing on the X scale, we're going to actually set that to 0 0.06. And on the Y scale, we're going to set that to 0 0.1. Now that we've done that, the exit button looks pretty good to me. Next, what we're going to do is add the search bar to this as well. And now we've already created a search bar, so we might as well just not waste the time recreating it. What we're going to do is we're going to go inside of the pet inventory, inside of the frame. And then we have this frame right here called search. What we're going to do is copy that. And then we're going to paste that directly inside of our pet bank frame right here. Again, by hitting control shift V. And there we go. We can now see that inside of here. Of course, we need to adjust this a little bit. I think the sizing for this GUI is actually perfectly fine. So we're not going to adjust the sizing property, but we will adjust the position property. Now for the position on the X scale, we're going to actually set that to 0.16. And on the Y scale, we're going to set that to 0 0.025. And now that we've done that, we can see that the search bar is towards the top left of our frame. And that looks good to me. We want to make one more adjustment to the actual search bar. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab the UI stroke from our by slash text button. And we're going to throw that inside of the search frame right here. And I think the thickness looks pretty good on it already. I'm just going to increase the thickness a tiny bit. So I'm going to set that to 2.5. And now that looks pretty good. Now that we're finished with the search bar and pretty much all of the top related stuff, what we're then going to do is throw a frame inside of our current frame. And we're going to rename this to buttons. Now we're going to actually use this frame towards the bottom of our current frame that we have right here. And that's where all of our buttons are going to be for when a player actually wants to click, deposit, or withdraw or cancel on all of their pets. For the size of this, we of course want to make that scale. So on the X scale, we're going to go with 0.875. And on the Y scale, we're going to go with 0.1. Then we want to adjust the position. Now, for the anchor point on the X, we want to set that to 0.5. And of course, on the position scale, we want to set that to 0.5 as well, so that that's centered. Then for the Y scale position, we want to actually set that to 0.865. So now that appears towards the bottom of our GUI, and that's looking pretty good. Then what we're going to do is actually add a frame to this, and we're going to rename this to mode. Now, for the size of this, we actually want to set it to 1, 0, 1, 0. So one scale on both the X and the Y. So it's the same height and width as its parent frame, which is the buttons one right here. The first set of buttons is actually going to be the one when you initially open up the GUI, and that goes along with the text label right here, select an option below to continue. So when the player first opens the GUI, we want to display two buttons at the bottom right here that says, hey, what mode do you want to go to? Do you want to deposit pets or do you want to withdraw pets? Now we also have another set of buttons that happens after they select whichever mode they want to go to, and that set will actually be three buttons. One is going to be the action button, which will say either withdraw or deposit a pet. The second button is going to be the cancel button, and the third button is going to be select all. So that's why we're creating two different frames inside of here, one for each group of buttons, basically. So now that we have that, what we're then going to do is throw a UI grid layout inside of here, and then we're also going to throw a text button inside of here as well. Now, let's go ahead and make some adjustments to the UI grid layout. For the cell size on the X scale, we're going to set that to 0.3, and on the Y scale, we're going to set that to 1. Additionally, for the cell padding on the X scale, we're going to set that to 0 0.05, and for the Y scale, we're going to set that to 0. Additionally, for the horizontal alignment, we want to set that to center so that the buttons are relatively centered in the GUI. Now that we've set up our UI grid layout, we can actually start setting up the text button. We're going to rename this text button to withdraw. Now for the text is bun, we actually wanted to say withdraw pets. And then we're going to set the text color to white. We also want to set the text to be scaled. And then we also want to change the font to Gotham. Now for the background color of this bun, we actually want to make it a blue. So something like that. Additionally, I think I'm going to make the font bold as well, because that looks much better. Then what we can also do is actually go inside of the buy slots bun and copy both the UI corner and UI stroke and paste that directly inside of the withdraw bun. Now that we've done that, we can see that our bun is round and it also has that black stroke slash outline around it. You can make adjustments to the stroke or the corner if you want to, but I think that looks pretty good. Now that we've made the withdraw bun, we can actually duplicate this and we're going to rename this to deposit. And then for the text of this, instead of saying withdraw pets, we're going to say deposit pets. Cool. So now that we've created both those buttons, that's looking pretty good. What we can then do is actually set the background transparency of the mode frame to one so that we don't see that background, but we can still also see the background of the buttons frame. If you want to adjust that now, you can set that to one. I like to keep this to zero until I'm fully done creating the GUI so that you can make sure that no buttons are expanding past the frame or anything like that. But I'm going to set this to one because I already know we're going to be good. Next, what I'm going to do is actually duplicate the mode mode frame right here. And we're going to rename this to action. Then we can expand this frame. And then what we're going to do is duplicate one of the buttons once again. Additionally, we want to set the visibility of the mode frame to not visible so that we can actually see the action frame that we're working on right now. Then what we're going to do is figure out which button is the leftmost button. And that's the withdrawal text button right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually rename this to action. And for the text, we're going to say withdrawal one pets. Now that's looking pretty good. We're then going to figure out which button is the middle button. And this deposit text button is the middle one. So we're going to rename this to cancel. Now for the background color of the this, we actually want to set it to a red, and I think that red's good enough for us, so there we go. We also want to set the text of this button as well to actually say cancel, so that looks good. And then we have our last button right here, which is called deposit, and what we're going to do is we're going to actually rename this to select all, and of course for the text, we want to say select all. And now we're finished with all those buttons. The final thing that we have to do is basically add in the pet container, and that container is super similar to the one that we actually have inside of the pet inventory. So what we're going to do is actually copy that container and paste that inside of here, and then just 
just readjust it to however we need to readjust it. So we're going to go inside of the pet inventory GUI. We already have the frame expanded and then we're going to want to expand the holder frame. And then we have the container scrolling frame right here. And we're going to want to copy that. And then we're going to want to paste that directly into this frame right here. Now, of course, we're going to go ahead and start making some adjustments for the anchor point on the X. We're going to set that to 0.5. And then we're going to come down to the position. And on the X scale, we're going to set that to 0.5 so that it's centered horizontally. And on the Y scale, we're going to set that to 0.225. For the size on the X scale, we're going to set that to 0.95. And on the Y scale, we're going to set that to 0.6. And now we can see it's pretty much centered on our GUI and it's looking pretty good. Next, what we're going to do is actually adjust the canvas size. And we only want to modify the Y scale of this rather than it being two, we want to make it a little bit shorter. So we're going to set that to 1.5. Then we can actually open up the container and we have the template inside of here. Let's go ahead and make that visible. Now that we've made that visible, we can see it actually looks a little bit odd. So what we want to do is make some adjustments to the UI grid layout. For the cell padding on the UI grid layout, we actually want to set the X scale to 0 0.005 and we can keep the Y scale exactly the same. So 0 0.01. Now for the cell size, we actually want to make the X scale 0.125. So that makes that look a lot nicer. And we're also going to adjust the Y scale a little bit. And we're actually going to set that to 0.115. Cool. So now what we can start doing is actually working on the template. Inside of the template, we actually have a text label called selected. Now, if we make this visible, it's actually just a big X, which is not something that we want. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and delete that. Inside of here, we also have an image label called equipped. And what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate that. And we're actually going to rename this to select it. Then for the size of this, we actually want to set it to about 0.8 on both the X and the Y scale. And then we also want to center this as well. So for the anchor point, we're going to set both of those to 0.5. And then for the position scale, we're going to set both those to 0.5 as well. Now we're going to use this selected image label whenever the player is withdrawing or selecting pets to be deposited. And that's when we're going to display the selected image label. Additionally, we're going to duplicate the equipped image label once again, and we're going to rename this to locked. Now for the actual image, what we want to do is scroll down and find our lock image that we have right there and then set the image to that. Now I think the size and everything is pretty much good for this. The only thing that we want to do is adjust the positioning of this a little bit. So on the Y scale position, we're actually going to set that to 0.5. And then if we go to the anchor point, we also want to set the Y of the anchor point to 0.5 as well so that that's centered vertically. And now we're pretty much done with creating that template text bond. We can duplicate this a couple of times and see how this looks. I think it looks pretty good. You of course can make any adjustments to this that you want. If you want to mess with the spacing between any of them or maybe even the sizing of them, you of course can play around with the UI grid layout or do anything else like that that you want to. Anyways, since I like this, I'm going to go ahead and delete all the templates except for one. And then I'm going to also set the visibility of the template to false. Another thing that we're going to do is go inside of the bunch frame and we want to set both of these frames to not be visible neither. Now we're pretty much done with this entire thing. The last thing that we're going to do is make the frame look a tiny bit better. So we're going to actually throw a UI corner inside of this. And for the UI corner on the scale, we're going to set that to 0 0.025. We're also going to throw a UI stroke inside of here as well. For the thickness, I'm going to set that to 3.5. And then for the color, we actually want to grab the color of this frame. And then we just want to make it a little bit darker. So it's not going to be a complete black. It's just going to be slightly darker than the original color. And now that we've done that, I think this frame is looking pretty good. Now that we've finished creating the GUI, we're going to go ahead and script that in the next episode. As always, if you guys did enjoy the video or it did help you out, make sure you smash the like button. Also hit the subscribe button and turn post notifications on so you can get notified every time I upload a brand new episode. I also have a Patreon. If you guys like to support me and gain access to all the scripts and the game file that I made during this episode, there's a link down below in the description and you guys can go and check that out. With that being said, I'll see you guys in the next episode.